videotape, we will look at two methods of machining offset holes in a workpiece on the engine lathe. The term offset describes any machining that cannot be done in a self-aligning three-jaw chuck concentric to the workpiece. The two methods you will see demonstrated will be machining the work clamped to a faceplate and machining the work held in a four-jaw independent chuck. After viewing this videotape, you should be able to describe the safety procedures for machining offset holes in the lathe, describe the steps in setting up a lathe to machine offset holes with the work clamped to a faceplate, and describe the steps in setting up a lathe to machine offset holes with the work held in a four-jaw independent chuck. The machine shop can be an accident-free place to work if you observe certain safety practices. Always wear safety glasses. Remove all jewelry. Keep your sleeves above the elbow. Check your work setups for clearance before engaging the clutch. Run offset work at a slower RPM than you would use for centered work. For this demonstration, we will drill a three quarter inch hole and recess a two and 450 thousandths diameter, one eighth inch deep in a one half inch thick flange plate that is four inches in diameter. Before it can be clamped to the face plate, the work must be faced to its specified thickness of one half inch. This operation can best be performed in a three jaw universal chuck. Face one end smooth. Then reverse the workpiece in the chuck and face it to the thickness with a compound rest method. Machine a smooth area on the outside diameter of the second side. Then measure the thickness. And set the compound rest to cut enough material to give the one half inch thickness to the flange plate. Machine the second side smooth. Next, lay out the work as specified on the drawing. Blue both surfaces of the workpiece. Use the vernier height gauge with the part clamped to an angle plate. Set the height gauge at two inches which is one half the diameter. And scribe a line across the workpiece at the center height. Now rotate the work 90 degrees on the angle plate and use a machinist square to align the scribed mark. Clamp the work to the angle plate. Scribe a second mark on the work at the two inch height to locate the center of the flange plate. Now, reset the height gauge to one inch and scribe the center of the three quarter inch hole, which is offset one inch from the center of the flange plate. Remove the work from the angle plate and center punch the center to mark the three quarter inch hole. Replace the flange plate on the angle plate with the center punch side to the angle plate. Align the center of the flange and the center of the three quarter inch hole with the edge of the angle plate and clamp in place. Set the height gauge to 775 thousandths and mark the center point of the recess, whose center is offset one and 225 thousandths of an inch from the center of the flange plate or 775 thousandths of an inch from the edge of the plate. Scribe the line. Reset the height gauge to two inches. Inscribe the center of the flange plate. Loosen the flange plate and turn it 90 degrees on the angle plate. Use the square to line up the scribed line. Clamp the workpiece 
and scribe the center line on the flange plate. Remove the work and center punch the center of the recess. Then set a pair of dividers to one and 225 thousandths or the radius of the recess and mark the recess. You have now laid out the work so that it can be centered and clamped on a face plate for recessing one side and drilling the other. By recessing first, you will not wipe out the layout marks for the drilling operation. Mount a face plate on the spindle nose of the lathe using the same procedure you use for mounting other chucks. Notice that the face plate is equipped with bolt slots and T slots, which will be used to clamp the work. Place a center in the tail stock and move the tail stock to within two inches of the face plate. Clamp the tail stock. Place the marked flange plate against the face plate with the side mark for recessing out. Place the tailstock centers in the marked center hole by cranking the tailstock spindle. Use a slight pressure to hold the work against the face plate. Select the bolts and clamps you will use and clamp the workpiece to the face plate. Remove the tailstock center. Notice that the clamps must be flat on the work surface to hold effectively. Set the compound rest parallel to the ways and set up the tool post with a right hand holder and a right hand shouldering tool. The shouldering tool has an angle of less than 90 degrees between the side cutting edge and the end cutting edge. So it can machine the bottom of the recess and the shoulder of the recess without being repositioned. The shouldering tool must have a steep end relief angle for clearance on the inner diameter of the recess. Set the tool bit at center height and move the tool to the outer diameter of the recess. Turn the face plate by hand to check for tool clearance. Calculate the spindle RPM using the outer diameter of the recess. Set the RPM. Set the feed rate for finishing and engage the clutch. Set the cross feed to travel from the center of the recess toward the operator. Using the cross feed and carriage, touch the tool to the workpiece in the marked recess area. Lock the carriage. Set the compound dial to zero. Move the tool bit to the center of the recess using the cross feed travel. Feed the compound in for a depth of cut of 30 to 50 thousandths. The depth of cut will vary with the angles ground on the tool bit. Engage the cross feed and machine the recess until it is close to the outside diameter line. Disengage the cross feed and move it back to the center of the recess. Repeat the process until the recess is machined to a depth of 125 thousandths. On the last cut in machining the recess to depth, Disengage the cross feed and move the tool out of the recess using the compound to machine a square shoulder. Disengage the clutch. Set the cross feed dial to zero and do not move the cross feed. Measure the diameter of the recess with an inside caliper and an outside micrometer. And adjust the cross feed dial to give the desired diameter. 
check the recess depth with a depth micrometer. The recess depth should be machined to specifications since the compound rest was used to measure the amount of material being removed. Engage the clutch and feed the compound in to machine the recess to its specified diameter. Do not feed the compound past the recess depth. The cross feed may also be used to remove any ridges that appear at the bottom of the shoulder. Unlock the carriage and move the tool back. Disengage the clutch. Remove the tool post assembly from the compound. You have now machined this recess to specifications. Loosen the clamps and reverse the workpiece in the face plate. Use the tailstock center to align the center of the hole to be drilled. Reclamp the workpiece to the face plate. Reset the spindle RPM for drilling a three-quarter inch hole. Be careful not to drill offset work at too high an RPM. Since the work is offset, and the weight on the face plate is out of balance. Clamps do not hold work as securely as other chucks. Place a drill chuck in the tailstock and set it up with a center drill. Engage the clutch and center drill the work, lubricating the center drill as you go. Then drill the lead hole. Remove the drill chuck and replace it with a three-quarter inch drill. Drill the three-quarter inch hole. Move the tailstock back and disengage the clutch. Remove the workpiece from the face plates. Remove any sharp edges with a file, abrasive cloth, or a bearing scraper. This flange plate is finished with a machined hole and the recess as specified on the drawing. To demonstrate the second method using a four jaw chuck, we will need a one half inch flange plate with the same layout lines you saw in the previous demonstration. After the plate has been faced to thickness, use the surface plate, angle plate, and vernier height gauge to lay out the workpiece following the procedure you saw earlier in the videotape. Mount a four jaw chuck on the lathe spindle nose. Slide the tail stock center up to the chuck, leaving approximately two inches of clearance. Clamp the tail stock. To machine the recess with the work held in a four jaw chuck, the work must extend out of the jaws a distance of the recess depth with about 1 16th inch added for clearance. This would then be approximately 5 16th inch. Use parallels to block the work out of the chuck and to keep the surface of the flange plate parallel to the chuck face. Have the chuck jaws roughly positioned to hold the flange plate in position for machining the recess. This setup can be checked by running the tailstock center in. Back the tailstock center out. Place the parallels against the chuck face. You can let one of the parallels rest on the bottom jaw to make it easier for you to hold all of the pieces in the setup. Place the flange plate against the parallels and hold it in place with the tailstock center aligned in the punch marks that designate the center of the recess. Now, tighten the jaw. Be careful not to move the flange plate off its alignment on the tailstock center. You may have to rotate the flange plate slightly to get perfect alignment in the jaws. Be sure all of the jaws are tight before removing the center. Remove the center and slide the tailstock out of the way. Remove the parallels. You may have to give the parallels a slight tap to get them out. If so, tap them with a soft mallet. Set up the right hand shouldering tool in the right hand holder for machining the recess. 
set the RPM for a two inch diameter. Start the machine and machine the recess using the same procedure you used when the workpiece was clamped to the face plate. When the recess is completed to specifications, remove it from the chuck. Reverse the workpiece in the chuck and align it for drilling the three quarter inch hole. The work does not have to extend out of the jaws this time since there is no machining on the outer diameter of the work. Use narrower parallels to align the flange plate. This will put more surface of the flange plate in contact with the jaw for added holding power. Move the tailstock center into position and align the flange plate for drilling the three quarter inch hole. Tighten the jaws. Remove the center. And remove the parallels. Reset the RPM for drilling the three quarter inch hole. Equip the tail stock with a drill chuck and center drill. Engage the clutch and center drill the workpiece using lubricant on the center drill. Drill the lead hole. Then drill the three quarter inch hole. Disengage the clutch. Remove the workpiece and remove any burrs or sharp edges with a file, abrasive cloth, or a bearing scraper. You have just seen two methods of holding work in the lathe for drilling offset holes and machining offset recesses. Offset machining setups using the face plate and four jaw chuck are only limited by the imagination and experience of the operator. In reviewing the two methods of machining offset holes, you should now be able to describe the safety procedures required for machining offset holes, describe the steps for setting up work on the face plate and machining offset holes, and describe the steps for holding work in a four jaw chuck and machining offset holes. Remember, the imagination and skill of the operator are the only limits on setups for offset machining on the lathe.